Welcome to Don't Subtract Add. Uh, in this lesson I'm going to solve some subtraction questions um, by changing them into addition questions. Let's start with this one here. Uh, Tim has $54 and he needs to give uh, $29 to Sam. We want to find out how much money he has left. Well to start with let's use some uh, materials for this question here. Um, you can see here I've got uh, $54, they will belong to Tim, and over here is Sam, and he needs to end up with $29. Well, to start with, I could give him uh, two $10 notes. There's one $10 note, and there is the second $10 note. So I've given him this part, the 20 Now I just need to give him nine more dollars, but you can see here, I've only got four one dollar coins, and I need to give him um, I need to give him nine. So what I'm going to have to do is swap one of these ten dollar notes um, for some one dollar coins. Well, what I can do is go down to the bank. I've got the bank down here, and I'm going to take one of these ten dollar notes, give that to the bank, and the bank are going to give me ten one dollar coins in exchange for that ten dollar note. So I'm going to move these 10 $1 coins up to here, and now it's going to be really easy for me to give Sam the $9 that he needs. I can give him 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, eight and nine. Now you can see that that means he's left with two ten dollar coins or twenty dollars and one two three four five one dollar coins. So he's left with twenty five dollars. Now we're going to see if there's an easier way to solve this question um, by changing it into an addition question. So let's go down a little bit a bit further. Well, well, we know Sam needs $29 plus some amount will lead to the total amount of money which is 54 which is what Tim started with. We've solved questions like this before by using a number line so let's try and use that again. We can put 29 on here and we can put 54 on, and just like we've done in the past, we could do a small jump up one, which would take us to 30, which is a nice tidy number. And from 30, it's easy for me to jump up to 54. That's a jump of 24, which means in total I jumped up 25. So you can see that by changing my original question into an addition question, it's quite easy to find that answer. Let's imagine that a library has got 67 books. Now, of those books, 38 of them are old and horrible and need to be thrown away. So we want to work out how many books will they have left. Now we can also record this question as an addition question. We can say they've got 38 old and horrible books plus some others, so that in total they have 67 books. So now we can use one of our addition strategies to try and work out what that number will be. Well, I'm going to use a number line. And on my number line, I'm going to write 38. And at this end, I'll write 67. Now my first jump, I'm going to jump from 38 up to a tidy number. So I'm just going to do a little jump, I'm going to jump up 2. 38 plus 2, and that gets me to 40. And the reason I've gone to a tidy number is because it makes my next jump really easy to do. So from 40, I'm going to jump all the way up to 67. And I know that from 40 up to 67 is a jump of 27. So, so far we've done a jump of 2, 
and a jump of 27, which means in total we've done a jump of 29. So now I can write this number here into my two questions, 38 plus 29 equals 67, or 67 minus 38 equals 29. Let's just remind us what those numbers mean. 67 were the books that the library started with. If they threw out 38 old ones, that means they're left with 29 books. Let's try another question. Um, a family's going on a car trip which is 84 kilometres long. They've already driven 27 kilometres. We want to work out how many kilometres have they got left to drive. Well, first of all, let's start by trying to change this subtraction question into an addition question. We could say that so far they've driven 27 kilometres. So 27 kilometres plus how much more will get them their total uh, trip of 84 kilometres. Just like before, you can see that that's going to be easy to solve using a number line. So I'll put 27 kilometres, which is how far they've gone so far, and 84 kilometres here, which is how far they need to drive. I'm going to do a small jump up to a tidy number, and I'm going to choose 30, because that's the closest one. And from 30, I'm going to jump all the way up to 84, which is a jump of 54, which means I've jumped 54 plus 3, which means I have jumped 57. So I can write those in here. That means I've got 57, or they've got 57 more kilometres to drive. Let's look back at this question over here and see if we can see any patterns. Well, you can see the big number, 84 kilometres, in the subtraction question is at the start. Whereas in the addition question, the big number, or 84 kilometres here, is at the end. Because in the subtraction question, we're imagining starting with 84, taking away 27, and working out how much we've got left. Whereas in the addition question, we're imagining we've done the 27, and we're wanting to add an amount to get us up to 84. Now it actually wouldn't have mattered whether we'd put the 27 there, or the 27 there. But I think it's always easier to say an amount plus something or in this example, 27 plus something equals 84, rather than going something plus 27 equals 84. Well, I hope you found this lesson helpful. Um, if you need some more help, check out teachertools.co.nz.